us about what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about bashing Democrats. It's not about yeah. taxes. They have no idea what the Boston Tea Party was about. Sure. They don't know the history at all. This is about hating a black man in the White House. This is racism straight up. I'm not an expert, but I am not an idiot. And what I see going on here is socialism. Washington, are you listening? I think any time that you have severe economic conditions, there is always a, an element of disaffection that can mutate into something that's unhealthy. Uh, Literally dozens of Fox News viewers, sorry, dozens of outraged citizens protest having to pay their fair share of the taxes the rest of us pay. Let the teabagging begin. This initiative is funded by the high end. We call it AstroTurf. It's not really a grassroots movement. It's AstroTurf by some of the wealthiest people in America to keep the focus on tax cuts to the rich uh, instead of for the great middle class. These self-styled tea parties were aimed squarely at President Obama and the Democratic leaders in Congress. But the conservative movement has found a reason to live. They have found something about which they feel very positive, something they are ready to rally around. I speak, of course, of teabagging. There was a small group of people who was making uh, things a little bit uncomfortable for us, and at one point, I had to go and stand by police. Wait, why do you say he's a fascist? He's the president of the United States. He's a fascist. Do you, do you realize how? Do you realize how offensive that is? I think he's a fascist. Why? Because he is. Those of you who are watch, watching certain uh, news channels, that, you know, which I'm not very popular, and you see folks waving tea bags around. Let, let me just remind them, I am happy to have a serious conversation about how we are going to cut our health care costs down over the long term, how we're going to stabilize Social Security. Let's not play games and pretend that the reason is because of the Recovery Act. That's just a fraction of the overall problem that we got. I have to tell you, I think with parties, it has everything to do with politicians from those parties lying to the people that they're supposed to serve. America is sick and tired of being sick and tired of lies and corruption and flushing our country down the toilet for their power, for the donkey or for the elephant. I could give a flying crap and I have a feeling nobody here cares about the donkey or the elephant either. It's about putting putting our families, it's about putting our children under $12.8 trillion in debt in the last six months. All it took was two presidents in six months to do it. It's about the rule of law, that no one is above the law. If you're here legally or illegally, it applies. You're never too rich, you're never too powerful, you obey the law. It is about the media. It's about the media that has been irresponsible with the truth. It's about unions and big labor politicians who want to take the, the right to a secret ballot away, which is fundamental in America. It's about if you write the tax code, you should be able to be smart enough to figure out how to pay your taxes. It is about freedom of speech. It is about freedom of speech. People all around the uh, all around the country today have been called insane, lunatics, extremists, all because they believe in the fundamental principles that our founding fathers understood. But we are not insane or extremists or anything like that. We're just Americans, Americans that actually, and I know this is hard to believe, we're Americans that actually believe in something, unlike those in the media and Washington. Things. I think what matters with media things is that so many people are watching mainstream media, even though they're not in, even in the top ten, collectively they're watching ABC, CBS, NBC, and they're getting brainwashed, and they're not watching Fox. In fact, I have some liberal friends who I love very much. They're wonderful, very smart people, very funny, but for some reason they decided to block Fox News. My husband couldn't go over there because we don't have TV. Couldn't go over there to watch their show. don't have TV. No, I don't yeah. have, we don't have TV. Don't listen to her. Yeah. Don't listen to her. She's crazy. <laughs> I don't want my kids watching that stuff. But anyway, so they block Fox News as if it's like porn or something. I mean, it's blocked. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a America. Ooh. <laughs> That's some yummy porn there. <laughs> 
the media thinks. It does matter what the media says because a lot of people are watching that thinking that's real. They don't see the truth. They're does, anybody, does anybody feel like... ...was here to go on the record and he's, he's coming out swinging at President Obama. In a new fundraising letter sent to more than 12 million, Chairman Steele calls President Obama arrogant, among other things. RNC Chairman Michael Steele joins us live. Michael, before we get to the issue of your letter and your uh, remarks about uh, yeah. the president, I'm curious about these tea parties. Um, it, it's, it's hard for me to figure out whether it's a one-time deal, which we've asked people to vote on, or whether this is a real movement. What's your thought? Well, I think it's a little bit of uh, both, Greta, at this point. I think what you're seeing is a, a realization by a lot of Americans that the president and the Congress in particular have taken a course that they're not crazy about. They're not sure uh, where this is all going. And, 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 but what they want to make very clear that is that we've had enough with, with the spending, we've had enough with the mortgaging of our kids' future, uh, with, with debt creation. And this is, I think, a wonderful expression, a truly American expression uh, of concern and, and defiance, if you will, that the, bo the bottom line stops with them. They are drawing the line in the sand, as, as uh, Glenn pointed out at the Alamo, uh, that says this is far enough. We don't want any more of this. We want a fair tax uh, system. We want to make sure that we're paying our fair share. But we think right now the, govern the government is beginning to gouge, and we want it stopped, and we want to take a breath from this, and let us catch up. Let's begin to trust small businesses again. Let's begin to trust uh, the communities that have built the, the economy in the past, as opposed to this defiant rush uh, towards the government, which uh, by the government, uh, to taking greater control, hiring and firing the CEOs, determining the winners and losers in the marketplace. That's not the proper place for the government right now, and I think these tea parties are a way of say, uh, expressing that. All right, well, I'm anxious to see tomorrow morning after the uh, dust settles, we can count up the numbers and see the reaction around the country when all the news organizations sort of report in from their communities. All right, let's get to your letter to 12 million. Well, hey, Greta, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Now, I was going to say, on that point, let's, let's not put too much in what the news agencies are going to be reporting. We've witnessed the MSNBCs of the world denigrate these individuals, these men and women who have expressed real concern about where their hard-earned tax dollars are going. We've watched them make fun of them and sort of dismiss them. That's the arrogance that I referred to in the letter that we'll talk about in a moment that has riled people up right now. I, I from Dallas, and Nicole, you called me because I, I talked on the radio... Uh, what was it, three days ago? Mm -hmm. and, and there was a CBS poll that said that 96% of African Americans approved of Barack Obama, 4% had no opinion, and 0 were against it. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of African Americans calling me going, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I asked you to come up because you're not, you're, you're not, you went to the Tea Parties, right? Yeah. And you're not an activist, I mean, now. We had to bring it in. <laughs> They're in the green room. You're yeah. just a mom. Right. I'm a single mom. I work two jobs. I struggle. And I wanted to answer your first question, which was, what are they missing? The media is missing, first of all, objectivity. I think that's the biggest thing that they're missing yeah. is because we, <clears throat> we, all of us who attended the tea parties, there were all ethnicities, all political backgrounds, all income ranges, and we were all there because we're all frustrated. And, you know, the fact that when you ask about the spending, I'm like, I have to work two jobs to make ends meet. And every time I work two jobs, the more money I make to try and take care of my kids, the more you're going to take away from me. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, is not right, nor is it fair. I think that the private sector does a much better job of taking care of people. The government does not necessarily need to jump into that. And so if you stop taxing us, and let the private sector do what the private sector does best, then I think, you know, the okay. country would be much, much better. You know, Nicole, we, i got to get a break in. i got to get a break in, but, uh, but, uh, but Nicole, you made me think of something. You all, everybody's heard the phrase, time is money. If they taxed us the amount of time that it takes us to earn that money, no one would pay, and everyone would take to torches in the streets. We'll be right back.